Swag is 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. I am your professor. This is my classroom. Class is in session. This is where we teach the tenets of Like Us 101. Many of you are new to this classroom. Some of you need a little refresher course from time to time. So as we begin a new year of 2005, let me run down some of the basics of Like Us 101. And uh, then we will deal with the fallout thereafter. Like Us 101 students only date to get laid. Dating equals porking. The word dating was another word altogether in the days of American Bandstand or in the days of the malt shop. Dating meant going out to a movie and holding hands, making out. Yeah, sock hops, that's right. That's, that's what dating used to be. And then we get into the era of sexual excess. Women redefined the word dating. They redefined it. Once there was a time when if you made an appointment to see somebody at a restaurant, you made an appointment to come to their place, pick them up, drive them to a restaurant, eat dinner with them, share a bottle of wine together, and then drive them home. At one time, that was called a date. Until we came to the time when you would hear two women in the office talking. And one woman would say, Hey, guess what? Friday night, I'm having dinner with Bill. And the friend says... Oh, that's great. When did you start dating Bill? And she says, it's not a date. Well, sure, it's a date. It's Friday night. It's 8 o'clock. It's at a particular restaurant. He's going to come get you, pick you up. You're going to have a couple of drinks, maybe a bottle of wine, dinner, talk. It's not a date? No, it's not a date. Why? That's how women redefine the word date. It's not a date because there will not be any sex. So it's not a date. Your Bill's name might as well be Poindexter. She'll be happy to suck down free booze or wine. Be happy to eat uh, Bill's food. But no matter what he does, no matter what he says, there won't be sex. And that is why our female subject says... It's not a date. I mean, you know what a date is? You know what a date is? January 6, 2005 is a date. It's a date. That's the term we commonly use as an appointment, right? You make, you make an appointment. All right, let's make it a date. How about when people are getting married? Save the date. It's a date. By the way, aren't those the most ridiculous things? So now they have to send a wedding invitation now. Now they have to send the pre-invitation that tells you to save the date in 2009. And to await the forthcoming wedding invitation. No, so women redefine the word date. A date is an evening where you go out to a movie, a concert, or dinner, and then it's possible there will be sex. If the possibility of sex does not exist, it is not a date. Doesn't matter if there's a day and a time and a place. Doesn't matter how much money is being expended. If there's no possibility of sex, it's not a date. So, dating equals porking. Women define the term. So therefore, guys, you don't want to go on a date unless you're getting late. That's the purpose of it. Even women know that. That women decided that. So you don't go on a date, guys, because you want to uh, test a woman's IQ or find out what her political opinions are or to find out what her hopes and dreams and ambitions are, find out how her career is going, to hear all about her pet, to find out about her abusive ex-boyfriend or ex-husband. You don't go on a date for that purpose. You're there to get her clothes off and get between her legs. 
that's the purpose of going on a date. If you have any doubt that that's where it's going, don't go. Now, the result of having an opinion like that means uh, that you as a 101 student will be called a jerk or an a-hole. And guess what? You, that's exactly what we are. We're jerks. We're a-holes. We're proud. We are proud. Because we're being honest about what we want. By the way, we all want this. But only some of us are honest about it. Like as one one students don't spend more than $40 on a date, zero is optimum. A woman decides in the first 30 seconds whether or not she's going to put out all the lobster and champagne and limousines of the world are not going to change her mind. Many women decide even before they go out with you. You can tell the women who have no intention of having sex with you. They don't have a change of clothes with them. They don't have a change of panties. They don't have their diaphragm with them. Of course, how many women show you? But all those women that you're with who use the fact they don't have a diaphragm with them as an excuse for not having sex with you, that's because they never intended to have sex with you. And they're just using it as an excuse. Oh, I'd love to. How about the women who say, I'd love to, but I'm on my period? You like that one? I'd love to, but I'm on my period. She knew she was on her period before she stepped out the door. She could have waited till her period was over to have dinner with you, but no. She didn't. Why do you think that is? By the way, do you even know if she's having her period? No, you'll never know. We do not spend money on dates. It, it, in fact, it, it convinces women that we don't have any self-esteem. That we're not confident. The more we spend, the more women see that we don't think we can get lucky. It's a showing of no confidence. A confident man will say, hey... I'm not taking you to the Ivy for dinner. I'm not doing it. No, I'm not taking you, uh, no. Shutters on the beach. No, we're not having dinner at Shutters on the beach. No. I'm just naming L.A. places because I live in L.A. You fill in your own local places wherever you are. No, I'm not taking you to, to Patina. No. I mean, it's, it's just the way it is. It's like... A man should have the confidence to say, uh, no, we're going to El Coyote for dinner. No, I'll meet you after dinner. Let's have a drink later on. What time will you be done with dinner? you got to show confidence. Like as one-on-one students, don't impregnate anybody, no matter how good it sounds at the time. We don't date single mothers. We don't get talked into having sex without birth control because it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. I want to feel you. I want to feel you. Take that slimy thing off because I want to feel you. No, she wants to fill your wallet. Well, the next 18 years, that's what she wants. Never, ever let her talk you into that. Never let women move in with you. Unless you're about to marry them. Don't do it. Why would you give up your freedom? Don't be a cheapskate. If you want a roommate, get another guy. Don't let her move in with you. Period. Don't move in with her. Period. If you can't afford the rent, there are all kinds of services. Just go to the web. There are all kinds of services to help you find a roommate. When they do credit checks and background checks on people, go there. Pay the 49 or 69 bucks or whatever it is and find yourself a roommate. Don't move in with her to save money because she'll be checking your email, your voicemail. She'll be going through your, your credit card bills. She'll be going through your wallet. She'll be going through your drawers. When somebody calls on the phone, she'll go, don't worry, I'll get it. You'll go through that whole John and Yoko experience, you know the one I'm talking about, where she insists that you put her name on the answering machine. How many of you had that argument, right? She moves into your place, and immediately she's upset because your answering machine says, Hi, this is Tom. I'm not here right now. Leave a message. What about me? What about me? My name's... I want to record the voicemail message. Have you had that argument? You know the one I'm talking about. What about me? Let me record the message. Hi, this is Jennifer. Tom and I can't come to the phone right now because we're in love. And so don't, don't bother calling back. Leave a message. We might call you. We might not. Beep. Yeah. Don't let her move in. If only because now and then you want to be a man and watch a game. You want to watch the Super Bowl. 
You want to have the guys over to play poker? Come on. Don't let her move in. Don't do it. There's a million rules for Lycus 101, and I am here to help you understand them. I'm here to help you avoid commitment, avoid relationships, avoid marriage, avoid paying child support, avoid wasting time, effort, and money on chicks who are never going to give you what you want. That's what I'm here to do. If you have questions on how to achieve those goals, I'm here to help. If you have questions about how men think, I'm here to tell you. If you're angry at the professor for telling these things on the air, I'm ready and I'll take on all comers. All you have to do is dial. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800. Tom. I tell the guys out there now, I never, ever be with a single mother. Because eight months into our relationship, that birth control somehow didn't work. Why do so many of them on boys out there have to get burned by the fire before they believe me on that? I don't know. I guess they're not paying enough attention to Like It's 101, Tom. Huh? I guess not. It's Like It's 101 on the Tom Likas Show. <laughs> Tom Likas Show with the first Likas 101 class of 2005. Thank you for tuning in. We're here at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number, Jason, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, hey, Dad. How you doing, son? Not bad. How about yourself? Great. Great. So I need a little advice here. Do, do, do I care if you care? I need some advice. Go ahead. All right. So I just came clean to my uh, fiance about this porn stash I got, and she's uh, tripping out. So she never knew you had it? Well, she had some. Uh, I told her every now and then, but. So she knew you had it? Yeah. I mean, how many times do you have to tell somebody something? Once is enough. She knew you had a, sp a porn stash, right? She did. She knew that? Yes. All right. And uh, did she give you a hard time about it the first time you told her? Um, not really. It wasn't really a big issue. So when did it become a big issue? Well, I kind of I brought it out, and I laid everything on the table and just gave her all my videos, and we're going to about to get married, but she uh, she's upset. She feels insecure. She's beautiful, and I love her, and... She's gorgeous, and she's all I want, but she doesn't understand that it's not a real thing. Well, uh, you know? and do you want to be married to somebody who tells you what to do? No. That's right, you don't. So you're going to tell her she has no choice in the matter? That you've always had a porn stash? Yeah. That you told her about it? You I did. You didn't hide it? No. And uh, she accepted that, and when you asked her to marry you, she knew that. And when she said yes, she knew that. And so she has no choice in the matter. Actually, I, I just broke it out of the porn stash, like, after we've been engaged. So you never, uh, you just told me you did tell her. Yeah, well, before... Did the, you tell her or not? After the engagement. So you didn't tell her before then? No. Why not? I don't know, it's just, uh... You know. Because you're a pussy? No. Why didn't you tell her? Because, uh, I just... You knew it was an issue. And, and the reason I know you knew is because you made a point of bringing it out after you asked her to marry you. Mm-hmm. So you're a pussy. Yeah. Guess so, Tom. Yeah, well, you better man up now. And what do I tell her about that? She's got no choice. You've always had it, and that's that. So she just feels insecure because she doesn't look like uh, these girls in these videos. Yeah, well, tough luck. You know what? Uh, her being insecure is what will keep her going to the gym and keep her looking good. Yeah. That's a good thing for you. Oh, she looks great, though. Yeah, but the point is that she looks great now. Yeah. She doesn't have your last name and your ATM card yet. <laughs> Let's see how she looks then. Got you, Tom. That's what happens, Jason. This is the United States of America. Women are geared to uh, do anything they can to get you in the door. 
look great, suck anything you ask them to, lick anything you ask them to, until they get you to sign the contract. The contract? Yeah, called a marriage certificate. Mm -hmm. The one you're about to sign. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, then you'll find out what they're willing to do and not willing to do. Yeah, well, I've been uh, listening and uh, been taking notes, so. All right, so you're going to tell her you're not getting rid of the porn stash. It's always been there. You had it before she knew you. Yep. And um, it, it's not going anywhere, and she better get used to the idea that she's not going to be telling you what to do. Gotcha. Do you have the balls to do that? I do. Then you're going to do it. And she, by the way, she might tell you, uh, hey, I'm not marrying you. Are you man enough to accept that? I am. Good. All right, Tom, well, thank you. Thank you, Jason. You take me out of bong here. Thank you, Jesus. Here you go, Jason. Thank you, Jesus. Cindy. I got about a minute here. Cindy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I just wanted to call to tell you how much I love you. Really? <laughs> really? Yes. My boyfriend hates you, but he is just like one of those pussies that you talk about. Uh-huh. And um, I don't know. I've been listening to you since I was pregnant last March. I heard your first show, and it was about pregnant women. Uh-huh. And I just wish that um, I probably would have heard about you maybe 10 or 15 years ago, and I think that my life would probably be different. You think? Oh, definitely. You know, we've been on in Portland since 1994. Where were you? I don't know, but I've talked to my dad. He lives down in Barstow, and he just left San Pedro, so he is a Tom Likas listener, and he's been there for like 15 years with you. Oh, I love that, Cindy. Thanks very much for the call. The Tom Likas Show. This is the Tom Likas Show. Then it is. Likas 101, 1-800-5800-TOM. Is our telephone number. I am your professor. Keith, hello. Father. Son, how are you? Oh, first time, long time. I'm doing good. How are you doing? Doing okay. It seems as though I got. I need some advice. There was a, a girl that I used to talk to. Apparently, you know, she was with a guy. The guy hit her. He went to jail, and we hooked up. She he got out, so he wants. She wants to be back with him. Uh -huh. What can I say? I'm not. I'm gonna keep her secret, definitely. So then, obviously, he's going through a phone book, finds my number, gives me a call, and starts selling drama. How do I handle it? Do you have his phone number? No, no. No caller ID? No, no caller ID. It was a private number. Uh huh. Well, first of all, I don't know why you're taking any calls. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't take any calls anymore. Uh, right. Whether they're listed as private or blocked or no caller ID. I just don't take them. Right. I don't right. take them. I see. I don't know why you take them. Well, yeah, I should listen better, definitely. But the problem is, is like, he's saying that she's pregnant. Come on, I'm an avid listener, man. Not by me. <laughs> uh -huh. So now, you know, should I try to confront her? Should I talk to him? Well, what, is he threatening you? Well, he wasn't really threatening. I don't think he really wants to see me like that. Uh-huh. I don't, he's not really threatening, but I know he's upset. <laughs> he's but it's really uh, not my fault. He should control his woman. Uh, right. Now, she wants to be back with him. That means that he remained the boyfriend even when he went to prison. Correct. And what is it that he did to get him in prison? He hit her. Okay. And, uh, all right, so you, you, this was not a relationship for you. This was just a booty call. Yeah, of course. Right. Of course. Yeah. I understand. Um, well, first of all, uh, you should, if you can, especially if he's not physically threatening you, you should try to find out if there's any truth to this. Okay. Because uh, if if she accuses you of being the father, you're going to end up paying. Oh, no chance of that. No chance of that. No chance of that? No chance of because that. Because you use condoms. All right, do it. Thank you. Those, th But those things do leak or break. True. And uh, she's a drama queen. Uh, obviously. Right, and that's the risk you run when you do a drama queen. Yes, sir. 
Yes, she, she might very well have uh, put a pinhole in the condom. Who knows? Yeah, I hear you, Professor. So you need to try to find out if that's true or not. Yes, sir. Once you find out it's not true, a loser like a bad habit. Great, great. Do I need to confront him or just kind of let that ride? Confront him about what? That's true. It's not really my problem. Nope. Cool, cool. It's between you and her, and once you uh, determine uh, what the deal is, by the way, does she know where you live? Yeah. All right. So yeah. She's going to have to uh, serve you with papers if you are a parent. <laughs> and make sure you don't hide from those papers when they come. Make sure you get an attorney and reply aggressively. Yes, sir. All right. Well, I don't think there's a chance of that happening, but I appreciate the advice. I know, I know you say you don't think so, but I'm telling you, condoms are not perfect. Yes, sir. They're not. Can you take me out of school? Here you go, Keith. <laughs> 800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Chris. All right. I called in to tell, them, tell the boys out there a little uh, little something to do with the ladies. Always take them out to coffee. Oh, no. That goes directly against one of the basic rules of 101. You oh, do it's not so simple, though. You do not take her out to coffee because she will not have sex with you in most cases after coffee. Yes, but you have a $5 date. First date, obviously, is probably not going to get sex, which sucks. It does. Well, number one, that's not necessarily true. Number two, women will suck down as much coffee as they can get out of you while they're banging other guys at night. I've never had that problem, though. This, I have, I have been following this rule for the last year now, and I'd say I average between two and three women a week. You're having just sex with coffee. two to three women a week just through coffee. That is that is not what most guys are finding. Oh, I, I guarantee it. In fact, my whole household at home right now is doing the same thing. It's, it's, it's brilliant. It's $5. That's it. But we're not talking about the cost of, of, of the date. We're talking about whether or not it produces. It's been producing for me. It's perfect. But maybe it works for you. I don't know. Maybe you uh, look like Pierce Brosnan. I don't know. But the, the bottom line is for most guys, it doesn't work. Trust me, Tom. I don't look like Pierce Brosnan. Right. I'm pretty goofy looking, but women... And then what kind of women are you going out with? Are they nines and tens? I can't say that. I live in Seattle, man. There's no such thing. How about Seattle nines and tens? I would say probably Seattle sevens and eights. Seattle sevens and eights? Well, that's not... You know what? That's not saying anything. It's not, but... You could get them without going out to coffee. I, I'm going. I'm talking about going coffee, and I'm talking about quantity, not necessarily quality. Oh, well... <laughs> Again... You don't even have to spend the five bucks... <laughs> yes, I know, Tom, but the problem up here is, uh, and I don't know if you know Seattle too well. But, I do. But, okay, girls in Seattle, especially girls in Seattle, think their vaginas are made of gold. I, I know they think that, but uh, if you employ my techniques... Oh, I have. Oh, no, no, don't, don't get me wrong. Your techniques are 100% true. Yeah, but if you're taking chicks out to coffee... And that's all I do. I, I know mean, you're not I, getting nines I, and tens. Nines and tens, as beautiful as they are compared to other women have the lowest self-esteem, and they are the easiest to uh, uh, to put in the in the net. They're the, the easiest. I don't know, Tom. I think sevens and eights have a terrible low self-esteem. Not as low. No, no. no. Women with nines and tens. <laughs> well, that, that, the idea is you want to drive a woman's self-esteem down so far, she'll even have sex with you. Uh, that's true. I have, been, I have been doing a few a few number of girls between eights and nines, but, uh -huh. but really... I mean, but you want to get a shot or two of Jaeger into them. That's what you want. You just <laughs> you just want to get enough into them to get them a little tipsy because you know what happens when they get tipsy. Oh, yeah, but again, the Superior, they think their vaginas are made of gold, and it's terrible. Yeah, but I'm telling you, this, the, the fives through eights are more likely to be uh, like that. And the nines and tens, oh, low self-esteem, you can really nail them. 1-800-5800. Five hundred eight six six. God bless you. Highly unlikely, but thank you for the thought anyway. I appreciate it. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom Likas one oh one. Our first class of the new year, 2005. Allie, you're on with your professor. Hello. How are you? I'm okay, Allie. 
Good. Hey, I just wanted to tell you real quick, that guy was so full of crap, Tom. Oh, the last caller? Oh, yeah. Copy? Yeah. What is he talking about? No, uh, no. You, you want to uh, use whatever chemical inducements you can to get a woman to do what you want her to do. Exactly, or none at all. I uh, and alcohol is a depressant. So remember, if someone has low self-esteem, it only makes it lower. <laughs> this is true. But low self-esteem is the key to getting laid. That is probably very true. And you know what? The girls that are the prettier are 100% right. All the guys should listen to that. The girls that are prettier, every girl that I know that's a 10, feels like if she gains two pounds, that, you know, she looks like crap. Yeah, life is over. Might as well be Ricky Lake. That's right. Life is over. Exactly. And I wanted to tell all the guys, too, don't listen to him. You don't have to spend a dime. That's right. Well, a girl is going to go to Lowry's with you or wherever else. And you're going to spend 300 bucks, or you're going to buy coffee for 275, and she's going to she's going to sleep with you, or she's not. It doesn't matter. That's right. So, so. The, I, I say uh, I've always been a big proponent of Jägermeister or 1800 shots. There you go. Go go go. Hey, and I have to say, I've been dating the same guy. Where, you know, we're not classifying it or anything. You know, he's like a devoted listener to you. So, and and we don't classify it as boyfriend girlfriend. You know, but we're seeing each other, and I slept with him on the first date. I and, love that. And you know, we went out to dinner. We had drinks. He makes lots of money. He's your he's your your kind of guy. He's you know he makes lots of money. He works in the entertainment industry, and I knew this. He showed up. He, I didn't ask him what kind of car he drove or anything. I didn't tell him where to take me. We just downplayed it. We had drinks and went to a movie, and it was. I mean, I wanted to. If the girl wants to, you don't have to throw it all out there. It can just be what it is. You're right, Allie. What can I say? Thank you so much for the call. I appreciate it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is D.C. on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Dad, I need some help. Okay, son. Okay. Um, I've been going out with this girl for about a week. Okay, I spent New Year's with her, watched a movie with her. Why did you spend New Year's with her? Uh, well, she was at the party. Yeah. Oh, I, you met her there? I met her there, yeah. Okay. Okay. And, uh, so how many times have you actually dated her? Twice. Twice. After New Year's. Okay. Okay, movie, dinner. Um, so like I said, it's been, I don't know, almost a week now, and she's not giving any love. You know, uh -huh. what am I doing wrong here? You know what I mean? Well, uh, some chicks just don't want to give it up, but they've got to know that you're not going to go out with them forever. Uh, do you answer the phone on half a ring? Do you an Did you answer the phone over the weekend, for example? Um, no, I didn't. I mean, oh, I could. she'll call me and then I'll not pick up and, you know, I'll call her back, you know. Um, just, I don't understand why she's not putting out. Well, have you tried? I've tried. I mean, she'll take my, she won't take me. What's going on? Well, uh, you know what? Three strikes, you're out. Does she know that? <laughs> I haven't told her that, no. Well, but, uh, yeah, you know, um, when you get on that third date, I think it would be a good idea to let her know. Cool. I'll try that. Um, I'll just tell, I'll tell her straight up, you know. Um, i got to be blunt with her. Either, you know, do it or not. You know, I'm, I don't know. Yeah, well, it, it, they, she's got one more chance. One more chance, got it. By the way, how much did you spend on dinner? Dinner, uh... 16 bucks. That's good. You know? Good. Um, the movie was at my house. Uh huh. All right, so I'm doing everything okay. Right. But, uh, no love. All right. Well, you got some love. You didn't get you didn't get all the love you want. I didn't get enough, you know. Right. Well, like I say, uh. I wasn't satisfied. All right. That's why Three Strikes You're Out is so important. Move on to the next one. That's right. All right, blow me up. Here you go, DC. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM 1-800-5800-866 Do you think that perhaps a young person would become bulimic or dyslexic after listening to your show? Dyslexic? I don't know if they become dyslexic. I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry. What am I thinking about? I'm bulimic and what's no. the other one? I don't know. Retarded? Bulimic and... Many people have become retarded from listening to this show. It's the Tom Likas Show. <laughs> Show like it's 101. I'm your professor. It's Joe. Hello. Tom, how you doing tonight? I'm okay, Joe. Uh, 
Hey, I got a question here. I, I got a, a good buddy of mine. He's uh, he's got a he's she's just a chick, just an acquaintance of his, and and she was an ex girlfriend of mine, and he, he kind of sees her in passing, but not really doesn't really talk to her. But uh, about ten years ago, I I did this chick uh, several times, and I called her up, and she came over to my apartment. And we did did the did the thing, and several times, and, and this is a couple, two different apartments that she came over to my, and we did it. But uh, since then, um, and this is, as I said, this is about ten years ago, and she's she's never had my phone number, never knew. I mean, well, she, she knew where I worked, but uh, I've changed jobs and apartments this, since then, and. Since then, actually, I've remarried. I've married and uh, don't have any kids. But my good buddy of mine is telling me that she, she's got this kid, and uh, and this kid comes up to her uh, or up to my buddy and says, "I'm Joe's little girl." Now, how does she know that this guy's your buddy? Well, this this my my buddy, and she hunted me down. She came to my mom's funeral. And I and my buddy saw her there. Uh huh. And why did you go to your mom's funeral? How did this booty call know about your mom? Uh, just by a newspaper, I guess. So you, th this woman who was a booty call ten years ago mm -hmm. saw in the death notices your mother and 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 knew it was your mother, mm -hmm. who she never met when she knew you. Correct. And she showed up at the funeral. Right. And she meets your buddy, and how does she find out that he's your buddy? I guess, uh... He told her. I guess they... No, no, I guess they exchanged words at the funeral, and the funeral was like five years ago, you know. Right. So, what's happened between then and now? Uh, she hasn't... Nothing. She hasn't tried to uh, contact me, although my uh, good buddy of mine, I... He and I just have not discussed it. Do you want to know if that's your kid? Not really. All right. And she obviously is... I mean, look, you're not hiding. I'm not hiding, but... So if she wanted to find you, she could have. Right, right. She knew your name. Mm-hmm. She knew where you lived. She knew where I lived at, at times, but I mean... And, and I changed job three or four times since I irrelevant. You know, there are all these online services now. Oh right. Uh, where uh, you can put in somebody's name and find them. You know that. Oh, I know. So she knows your age and she knows your name. Right. And she really wants to find you. She can. Right. So what I'm trying to tell you is, if she hasn't found you by now, by the way. This was your mother's funeral she was at? Right. Why, where were you? I was in the front. I, ne I never saw her. I, uh, but my buddy told me she was there, and, and they exchanged words. So why didn't she talk to you? Uh, she snuck out before I could even see her. I All right. So, so chances are she's not really actively trying to find you. Right. So if you don't want to know whether that's your kid, and she has, you know, she, she had you there... She had you in the room. Mm-hmm. And finding you is not that difficult. You still live in the same city. Right. Different address, same city. She knows who your friend is. Mm-hmm. How hard would this be? Exactly. She's not trying to find you. Just leave it alone. Well, you know what? What good will it do to find her unless you want to know if this is your kid? Right, Exactly. So, I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. If it's your kid, you're going to owe her money either way if she wants to try to collect it. All right. Uh, I'm, I got my, I'm set in my ways right now. I don't want to, I don't want to have a kid. Well, then uh, hope for the best. You got eight more years to go, baby. And then the kid will be 18, and then hopefully she won't try to get you for back child support. Good luck. The Tom Likas Show.